We're gonna need some glossy Mod Podge for this DIY Mod Podge hack. And the reason for the glossy over the mat is look at this ceramic candle holder here. It's glossy. We're gonna keep most of the piece just like it is and add a little bit of accent to the bottom. See the ridges? They're gonna help us create an ombre effect using the color we already have without actually creating an ombre effect. Don't be confused, let me explain. These are two Dollar Tree pieces. I took my mica powder paint mixture, I love to call it, and created an ombre effect. I had several people say that they struggle blending and they have a hard time creating ombre. So I wanna show you an idea of how you can get a look like this without needing to use two colors. And finding a piece that has little raised areas or rigid pieces like this is really gonna help increase that effect easily. First, you're going to need to decide which color mica powder you need. And today I've decided to go with black. And people don't start questioning me about the ratio and saying, Brandy, how much to how much? Listen, mix with love, my friends, mix with love. I'm going to say I do a tappity tap of the mica powder and about a tablespoon of Mod Podge. Okay. And then whatever that is, <laughs> if you think you need some more, add some more the more mica powder color or pigment you have in here the deeper and more rich it will be versus you know the less it it'll be less i'm gonna use a pouncer for this but feel free to use whatever works best for you glass i like to use like a pouncer or cut up little pieces of sponge just helps best if i tap 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 on that sucker versus you know swiping with a paintbrush it leaves stripes i'm not a huge fan of that but I don't mind doing a paintbrush at the end to smooth it out, but ceramic and glass and smooth surfaces that I'm not prepping, this, it works best for me. See how we're starting at the bottom and just gingerly working our way up. This is super easy. It literally took me just a few minutes to do. And this stuff dries really, really quickly. You can obviously make the bottom as thick as you want and then when you're ready to start creating that ombre effect where it's blending into the whites, you start gently tapping up the sides of just the ridges. Then you'll see that you have that white blending into the black towards the bottom on the sides that are more dented in and not the ones that are popping out. Once this is dry, if you wanna completely go over it with a clear gloss, just so everything looks extremely blended, you can go right ahead, but I didn't on here. So you could see that it looks just fine, just like this. For this Mod Podge hack, I'm gonna be sharing how to use Mod Podge to prevent bleed through using a stencil. For our demonstration purposes, we're gonna be remaking over this little, I think it's Dollar Tree. Let me know in the comments below if you actually know where it's from, I don't remember. <laughs> I just seen it in my stash. I'm like, this will go great with my kitchen stencil I wanna use for this project. To prep the piece, I just painted the whole thing with Waverly's black ink chalk paint. And then I went over it with a multi-surface white paint. Do this however you want or start fresh. I only applied two coats on here and that was just fine with me. Put as many coats as you need on your piece. We're gonna just use regular matte Mod Podge and you can use whatever Mod Podge you would like for your projects. As you can see here, this stencil is a little large, okay? And I love this stencil, I'm not cutting it down, so we're going to have to make it work. And I thought this would be perfect for this project for those of you that also don't wanna cut down your stencils. As you can see here, there, even if I'm holding it down, there's some gapping. So it's always a good idea to grab your painter's tape and tape down your stencil if the project allows for it. Sometimes it doesn't. And real quick, I wanna share this awesome find I picked up at Ross. My local Ross has a craft section and they have amazing deals. I grabbed this for $3.99. And if you're hanging out with me on my browsing channel, you already see me grab this. But for those of you that don't, I love sharing deals. So here is one. I personally like using fat synthetic brushes like this whenever I'm doing a Mod Podge application to prevent bleed through. It really helps control the amount of Mod Podge versus using a sponge or a pouncer, and it allows for thin applications, which here's the great 
reason for that, it dries super quick, people. Super quick. I did two layers just to ensure that the Mod Podge was completely covering over the stencil. Now, if you don't want to do the Mod Podge method, you can absolutely take the same paint that you covered your piece with the base coat and go over your stencil doing the same thing. It's going to give you the same effect. In about 20 to 30 minutes, your piece should be dry. And if you pull it up to your face, you're gonna notice that all the little places that the stencil could be separated from your project, they're kind of all sealed in. I'm gonna be using a pouncer for our application and apply the onload offload method with it. And all that is is taking a bunch of the paint that you plan on using on your stencil getting it all nice and sopped up in whatever you're using as your applicator and then tapity tap tap tapping as much of it out until it's basically dry and then start tapity tap tap tapping on your stencil. This on its own is gonna help reduce bleed through in addition to using this Mod Podge hack. So it's kind of a two for one there. And I don't know if you noticed my hand sneaking up in the corner to hold down the painter's tape that was popping up on me. <laughs> Painter's tape was not trying to keep my stencil in place. It just wanted to keep popping up. Keep on loading and offloading your applicator as much as you need to. And don't be alarmed if your stencil sticks a little bit because you know, Mod Podge is sticky and it did seal it in together. I tried to get a really nice close up and hold it still for you so you could see how amazing this works to cut down the bleed through. For this Mod Podge hack, we're going to be demonstrating by creating a little riser and blending the iron on method to wood. I'm using the good old faithful Matt Mod Podge here. And people, everyone is probably going to have their own opinion on the best way to iron on. And there's nothing wrong with that. We all need to use what works for us. Me personally, I like to take a lot of Mod Podge and slap it all over the sucker that I am about to iron on and make sure it's a lot, a nice, healthy, juicy layer. And then we gotta wait for it to dry. <laughs> like two or three hours and then it's time to bring in the iron and people feel free to use whatever iron works best for you i use this little joint because most of the time it's sitting right next to me while i'm crafting here is the beautiful napkin that i picked out from my stash now most of the time and the reason why i said in the beginning we're going to be blending it to wood is because we are not painting this we're keeping it neutral and a lot of people like to paint their backgrounds so this way that the white helps it pop but i want to show you that sometimes you can take the iron on method with a napkin even if it has a white background that has neutral tones and make it look as though it's part of the wood grain and the wood and you don't know where the wood ends and the design starts and it's just simply stunning just make sure you get all the sneaky layers off my friends okay you have to make sure that we are just doing this with the top decorative layer or we're gonna have foof ups okay we're gonna have foof ups we don't want that so the best way to avoid that is to take a second. I like to tear the little corner. Usually it's really quick for me. It reveals them and then I just separate it. Since the top is all dry with the Mod Podge, you grab your iron and you go on in. Psych, I'm just kidding. How many of you were about to attack me in the comments? Like, Brandy, you forgot the parchment paper. Guess what? Your girl didn't forget the parchment paper. Now it's time to bring on in the parchment paper. If you've never done the iron on method before, Parchment paper really helps to kind of separate the napkin from the iron. It allows you to be able to take the heat from the iron and press it right on top of this parchment paper. And it really melts the napkin into the Mod Podge without burning the napkin, without ripping anything off of the napkin on to the iron. Sometimes things can melt to the iron as well as damage the design. Sometimes, depending on the inks of things, inks can run and bleed. Once you're happy with your placement, I like to work from one side to the next, and it's a good idea to make sure as you're doing this that your design is flat. Sometimes, if you don't, you can get bumps and creases 
inside of your application. It really takes a couple seconds for that Mod Podge to melt right onto the napkin and then just roll on with the rest of your project. Feel free to seal over this after it's dry. You can use whatever type of sealer. Do keep in mind that if you're going to put this in an area that's going to get wet, you want to make sure that you use a dishwasher safe topper sealer something that is safe with water now here i'm showing you how amazing this melts right on to our wood neutral backgrounds if you have some little neutral pops even on a white napkin you can see the white napkin almost takes on the appearance of the wood grains and please people Make sure that this is completely ironed on all around your edges before you go sanding around to get the excess off. If it's not, you're going to have some gaps around the edges and some fraying with your napkin. For this Mod Podge hack, we're going to make a mixed media mason jar lantern with a beautiful gloss over the top. First things first, get rid of the lid. We're not going to need it. Then grab your napkins, all the napkins, because we're going to need to look through the stash and find some prints that have colors that are kind of the same, but not the same, but share similar characteristics so it doesn't look too wild. You get where we're going with this. And on a side note, I want to share with you my super secret napkin piece that I have hidden. Look at this little Oreo gem. It's my precious. We're going to just stick it right back in there. And you guys never seen it. I mean, never use it, but now you know it's there. But we're never going to talk about it again. Okay, now moving on. You're going to take your napkins and you're going to get all the sneaky layers off because we only need the top layers, okay? And do this for as many napkins as you grabbed and then start tearing tearing them suckers on up just the little sections that you need and put them over in a pile and do it deliberately so this way you have designs that actually make sense like don't do it sideways so this way a design isn't like a whole piece you want to try and have something so this way because it's a mixed media design you want certain things to pop you can have like a certain pattern that really you can do whatever the heck you guys want but i'm just saying for me for this i did specific designs and that's how i rolled with it okay we're gonna use some mod podge then we're going to just take our little section that we tore and start in a spot there's no right or wrong way to give this a go just plop it on down and then against my normal recommendation. You're going to take your paintbrush and go right over the napkin because you gotta move quickly as you're doing this. So your Mod Podge stays fairly wet at the ends of the little patches that you're placing. And then this is really, really key to where you tore your napkins. So this way you can line up the designs. If you have some little spaces, do not fret about that because our overall gloss that we're going to pop over here will either seal that in or you can do like I'm doing here and just take teeny tiny little patches to seal in certain holes. That's entirely up to you how you would like to do this. But I try to make sure each design was a whole section. So as you're looking at it, you could see a full design. I let this dry for several hours and it's really pretty on its own, right? Just like this is nice and pretty. No, no, it's not. It's not pretty enough yet. 
We're going to need to grab some mica powder, some silver, some white, pick one. Then a little bit of glossy Mod Podge, okay? A little tiny dollop. We don't need a lot of the mica powder. And yes, it needs to be this color. And it only needs to be a little bit because if you put any more in there, it's going to turn into a paint and then you won't really be able to see through it very well. Just need a little tappity tap and then a lot of smooshing. So this way it's all mixed together. Then we're going to grab a paintbrush and gently go over the entire piece. Don't go over too many sections once this dries because then you will not be able to see the designs from the napkins. But if you do a nice thin layer, this is going to cover any glass that is still showing, any separation between the two, three, four different types of napkins you popped on here. It's going to be a stunning mixed media lantern. Had we have painted the mason jar white, we would not be able to have the lantern effect to be able to see through it with some lights. But what I love so much about the hack of using a little bit of glossy Mod Podge and a tiny bit of white or silver or mica powder is it creates just enough of a translucency and enough of a metallic sheen to tie in several different prints together and make them look like one unique creative art piece. As always, people, thank you all so much for hanging out with me today. And until next time.